we're looking at the return on common stockholders equity. Now, many students, they think this is the same thing as EPS. It is not the same thing as EPS earnings per share, but it's very similar. It's a very similar calculation. It's These are all earnings per share, return on common stockholders equity, all part of analyzing profitability. Profitability analysis evaluates the company's ability to generate future earnings. This ability depends on the relationship between the company's operating results and the assets the company has available for use in its operations. Thus, the relationship between the income statement and balance sheet items are used to evaluate profitability. Now, profitability analysis, lots of different ratios. Ratio of net sales to assets, rate earned on total assets, rate earned on stockholders' equity, rate earned on common stockholders' equity, which, by the way, the difference between those two is that one, you factor in preferred stock, one, you, you take out uh, preferred stock. Then you've got earnings per share, price to earnings ratio, dividends per share of common stock, and dividend yield. This one, again, we're focusing on the return on common stockholders' equity. Very similar ratio or calculation to earnings per share. The return on common stockholders' equity measures the rate of profits earned on the amount invested by only the common stockholders, not the preferred stockholders. The formula, we take net income minus prefer dividends. The reason why this is specific to common stock. So we have to subtract away the preferred dividends because that has no effect on the common stockholders on the common stockholders. And we're going to, so, so far this looks exactly like EPS and you're right. Net income minus preferred dividends, very similar ident identical numerator to the earnings per share calculation. But then the denominator is where things change. It's not the average common stock, common shares or common stock outstanding. It's the average common stockholders equity. So it's the average common stockholders equity. So we're talking about the dollar amount attributable to common stockholders equity, to common stockholders equity. So keep that in mind. It's not the number of shares outstanding. That's the difference is that the denominator does not take that into account. So that is our formula. That is our formula. So let's go through this and calculate it. Okay. When we're given net income, our net income for the year was $590,000. Let's start there. So $590,000. We're going to subtract away preferred dividends. Preferred dividends. Do we have any preferred dividends? No, the company has no preferred stock. So, so far going in order, no preferred stock. So that equals a numerator of $590,000. The denominator, we've got to get the average number of shares of, I'm sorry, not shares. This is where I even, see, caught myself there. Average common stockholders equity, which we're told the beginning and ending period balance for the year. And that's exactly how you would calculate it if you had a balance sheet. If I gave you a balance sheet, you would look at the end of last year and the end of this year, because remember the end of last year rolls over to the beginning of this year. So we're going to take the average of 1.1 million and 2.5 million. And we're going to average those two numbers together. So we take 1.1 million plus 2.5 million and we divide that by two. We're going to get $590,000. And then we divide that. The denominator is going to be an average on the bottom. That's going to be $1.8 million. Again, these are dollar amounts, not, not shares of stock. Caught myself earlier, didn't I? So that's important to remember. And this equals 32.78%. The higher this is, the more, the better it is for the company because again, it's the return on common stockholders equity. It measures the rate of profits earned on the amount invested. The higher the percentage, the better in terms of being an owner. But 32% is pretty good. That's a pretty good return on investment. Okay, so keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. It's a pretty good number. The lower it is, not so good. So if you're a potential investor considering your options, you want to look into that. You want to look into how much total stockholders equity is out there and you use these numbers to see what you would have generated over a period of time, over that year, over that year. So think about that and think about um, how important this, this calculation is with respect to return on common stockholders equity.